Who is Con Mama? Yes. What is Con that's Mama? It. That's, that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. That's the thing. That's it. That's who what is you Con Mama? Out. Who is Con Mama? That's the that's the question. Okay. We're waiting for an answer. Who okay. Is, who is Con Mama? I'm gonna. Trent's st- Con Mama. That's gonna be that's gonna be the opening for the show. My mama's Con. Mama. I'm gonna put that at the very beginning of the show. <laughs> The All About Nothing podcast is proud to support the 2023 Soda City Comic Con. August 19th and 20th, join thousands of fans of fantasy, comics, science fiction, anime, classic games, pinball, and much, much more as they descend upon the Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center. One day and two day tickets are now available for your chance to meet Sean Astin. As well, you can meet actor 90s heartthrob Vanessa Angel. Plus, you'll meet voice actors from your favorite anime series like Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, One Piece, and many more. Visit theallaboutnothing.com for links to more information and ticket information. The 2023 Soda City Comic Con is a premier pop culture experience in South Carolina. Get your tickets now. Visit theallaboutnothing.com for details. The All About Nothing podcast may have language and content that isn't appropriate for some. Listener discretion is advised. Recorded live from the GOT Sound Studio in Lexington, South Carolina. This is All About Nothing Podcast. With Trent Clark, Zach King, and my dad, Barrett Gruber. All right, welcome, Nothingers, to the All About Nothing Podcast. This is episode number 165. I am Barrett Gruber, joined by Trent Clark, Zach King over there. Welcome, fellas. Yeah? In order. Well, I mean, I pointed. Well, so, feel blessed. I'm my number one, so yeah, that makes sense. All right, let me let me get this crap out of the way. Uh, please subscribe <laughs> to the show. This is how we get new listeners. Please also consider supporting us financially by visiting theallaboutnothing.com and uh, becoming an official member and proudly calling yourself a true nothinger. We have a bunch of tiers available uh, that give you early access and exclusive content. Also, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts and you think we're worth it, go ahead and give us a review and fi- hit, hit the five stars. And if you're not on Apple Podcasts, give us a review where you can. Share the episode with your families and friends uh, or follow us on Twitter at AN underscore pod and Facebook. If you need more details, just visit theallaboutnothing.com uh, and uh, you can find all of the uh, information you need there. So, Thank you very much, guys, for sitting through it. I read through it and skipped the parts that I normally stumble. That you could have just read. That you, you just could have. You could have recorded, recorded it. it. Yeah, I could have recorded <laughs> it. But I need the interaction. Okay. okay. So uh, real quick before we introduce our guests, uh, I do want to do some shout outs. So uh, big thanks to Ben and Elizabeth McCarter of Max Real Estate Services in Lexington, South Carolina. Also, congratulations on their future birth of their baby girl. And as far as I know, yet to be named. So I'm just suggesting Barrett. Uh, Beretta. Beretta. Name. No, you call him Barrett. My, my daughter's name is Barrett. I mean, it's a don't make name. it right. Uh, that right. Was, he, he's on some right. George Floyd stuff right now. Look, this is that's George, a, George Jet. George Jet. That's, that's actually news that broke on our podcast. They had not said publicly about mm. the pregnancy or the fact that it's a little girl. So uh, we, we have to thank them for that. That's a new tier in, uh, in our thing. So yeah. if they want to break, everybody wants to come on and break their. They have to break. Oh, break they have to, they yeah, have break to, the pregnancy news on our podcast. Come thanks, on through. Uh, <laughs> thanks also to John Kosas and the Columbia Fireflies for their weekly Firefly update. The update uh, being available on Sundays early before the drop of the podcast that is about to come out. But that's about to come to an end because starting in August, uh, those updates will only be available to nothingers that are subscribed to the ten dollar month tier and higher. So the paywall. Do that soon. Also, uh, big shout out to the Columbia Free Times, operated by the Post and Courier, for our big announcement. Hold on. Yeah. Calm down. Oh, oh yeah. Calm down. All right. Well, we can't. But well, you guys it. didn't tell me. We can't talk about it yet. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow. Well, let's just. Everybody keep picking up those free time papers out of the kiosks around town. Also, uh, the Best of Columbia 2023 voting ended back in June. And the word on the street is... Hold on, hold on, man. Hold, oh. hold on, hold on. All right, sorry. You can't do that All right, yet, all right. Man. We'll, we'll just can't. move on. Yeah. All right, please welcome our guests. We have Brock and Amy from uh, Columbia Comics. Welcome, welcome, welcome. They are welcome. the organizers of the 2023 Soda City Comic Con. Uh, and uh, thanks for being here. Thanks Absolutely. a lot. Yeah, thanks we're, for having us. Thank y'all. We're very, we're very excited to have you here because uh, I've been to Comic Con a couple times, uh, and 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 I I didn't realize it's been going on since 2015. Yeah, that's right. We uh, our first weekend was the weekend of the flood. Wow. Oh, that yes, October that is, 4th and wow. 5th. That yeah. is right. That we knew is right. we knew we had something good when Saturday was well attended and it was just raining cats and dogs. But we knew something was amiss when Hueys were landing in the parking lot on Sunday. <laughs> so, you know, we're like, well, okay, proof of concept, check. Something's wrong. National emergency, check. What was yeah. the what was the turnout that year? 
Oh, that that seems like I may have hit a, hit a nerve. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. It was three thousand, maybe thirty five hundred. That's not bad. We we're, still had people that showed up on Sunday, like waiting to come inside, and mm. we were like, after the bridges and and dams had all been destroyed. I don't and know if they'd been destroyed, but they were closed. It yeah. was yeah. Or they were calling. Eight. They were calling for evacs, and we yeah. still had people there where they were like, well, we opened at like I guess our ten o'clock time at that time. Now we Sundays are at eleven. But we opened, and there was four or 500 people that were there. Most of our vendors showed up. I mean, you know, everybody was in local hotels, so we yeah, walked. Yeah. And, you know, we operated for a few hours, and then we were just constantly monitoring the situation and got no news that things were things were kind of getting bad. And yeah. so we sent everybody home, and, and fortunately, uh, to my knowledge, not a single person suffered any kind of loss or any yeah. kind of accident. And so, oh, you know, we, we came back the following year and the year after that and the year after that, and it, was, it has continued to grow. 2020, we decided, yeah, we're just going to take a break, yeah, yeah. you know, with the rest of the world. Yep. And then, you know, we came back 2021, you know, little a uh, little rougher running in, uh, coming out of COVID, but last year was fantastic, and we expect this year to be even better. Yeah. How, yes. uh, so w- with, uh, with, the with COVID and coming out of COVID, um, how 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 I, was it was it difficult to convince people to, to to come out? Is that is that why we saw hard numbers, or was it because COVID was still kind of a a thing? I would say it's more that people just in their own minds using their own abundance of caution. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, and at the, by the time we did it in 2021, we're talking about it was October that year, right? We, we did, did move it back a couple of months. And so yeah. it was. End of 2021, at that point, vaccines were out and abundant. Yeah. We just had everybody, because uh, it's the convention center, still required masks. We had yep. hand sanitizer everywhere. Yeah. We put that out there. And we had limited numbers because of COVID restrictions as far as crowd gathering. Yeah, gotcha. Mm-hmm. So there were only so many allowed in the building at a given time. So we kept it pretty, I mean, we still had a pretty good crowd. Uh, there were lined up down the block yeah. when we opened on Saturday. Nice. Big feet apart, people. <laughs> well, well, the we actually I don't think we actually had that restriction. Um, that was you know that's those are those encouraged but yeah. correct yeah. not enforced. Correct. Not the enforced. only thing that was really enforced was masks. And, that and was definitely given the some of the local audience, and we know that some of our attendees tend to lean to the conservative side, so they right. push back on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other than that, there wasn't really. Um, you know, a lot of restrictions that we had to adhere to. Obviously, the city of Columbia said, you know, you've got to wear masks. Okay. We had the barriers. We had the hand sanitizer. We took, you know, as many precautions as we could. And sure. the prevailing message was, if you don't feel comfortable, don't come. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was their choice. It was, it was it's, it's always everybody's individual choice whether they want to come to an event or not. And, you know, now that, you know, like Amy said, you know, vaccines are out there. I don't know what the percentage of... The, a vaccinated population is it's above 70 or whatever the number needed to be where everybody felt like yeah. herd immunity would kick in Correct. not to go down that. Yeah. yeah. That well, rabbit, rabbit hole. And, hole. Yeah. <laughs> and just to point out the, the word on vaccines is now is that a person with a vaccine can give somebody else that has a vaccine. So like it's, you know, it's, it's basically something that we're just going to have to live with and pass around as we pass around. Yeah. Well, we get the flu every year, right? Exactly. You, you, the whole, you, the you herd try will to be cold a- before the herd will be cold before the immunity yeah. sets in. Yeah. So <laughs> not always the worst thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Fast no, forward to 2022 not. blowout. Yeah. 2022 was great. Yeah. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Nice. It really was. That was. I think our best one ever. Really? Yeah. That's probably, yeah. that's a safe bet. I think, yeah. I think this year we're going to make 2023 best. Shoot I'm going to tell you how I found out about y'all. I went into a computer store and a computer store is called, I'll shout them out that, that computer store in oh, Harbison, Stephen and his group out there. Yeah, on so they had they had the 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 flyers out there, and I was like, oh, hmm. I was like, Zach's a really big fan of Comet, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, maybe we should try and you know get on, you know, let's let's try and either go to this or buy tickets to go so we can like promote ourselves. And Barrett got on <laughs> got on the phone because Zach found the number, and it just. I called Brock, and it just happened, and Brock everything. Answered. And now you're sitting here; it's kind of crazy <laughs> off a flyer. Well, it's interesting because the phone number at the bottom of the website, and I, I don't know how many people are going to listen to this. That is actually my direct number, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so, so it probably needs flyer. to be changed. I've, I, I, we're, we've looked into doing one of those Google numbers, you know, where it's kind of masked. Yeah, but I, we've just not we done that. that well, yet. glad glad y'all waited till do that, and we can actually get straight to you. Yeah. So, because this well, interview would have never happened if that flyer no, wasn't yeah. around. Well, he's good with emails, though. Oh, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm pretty quick on response and emails. Um, yeah. 
But I'll, I'll answer most phone calls. If I don't answer, leave me a voicemail. And if I know you're human, I'll call you back. <laughs> so let me ask you this. As far as like when you all decided that you all wanted to do a comic con or you wanted to have an event here in Columbia, what was, what was the, what was the decision? I mean, how, how did you come about that? I'll cover this one. I was this, say, I this wasn't was, around yet. This okay. was pre Amy. So the, the long story and I'll make it brief is that in 2011, um, my wife at the time and I were trudging around a warehouse that my father owns in Gaffney, South Carolina. And my dad is, Shout out to Gaffney. That's, that's right. Shout out to Gaffney. Home of Frank Underwood. Yeah. There you go. Shout out to Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> fifth, fifth congressional district. Yep. So we're slumming around my dad's warehouse in Gaffney. And he has a bunch of stuff from the 50s and 60s because he was born in the late 40s. Yeah. And they're just, you know, and his, his warehouse has leaks and he's just letting all the stuff deteriorate. And there's this comic book that's just laying on the shelf. And I look at it and I'm like, okay, this thing looks old. I don't know a whole lot about comics. I collected comics back in the 90s, but that was like when Valiant was big. When everybody was collecting it. And, yeah. You know, 150 billion comics were printed every month. Correct. And, you know, everybody they, had one. Like yeah. Pokemon back in the day. Like everybody used to collect them, but nobody still has the ones they collected back in the day. Well, those are actually really... worth some money for you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. These yeah. comics, you know, you need to use them for Tinder to start a fire. Yeah. Correct. So. <laughs> <laughs> totally thought we were talking about a different kind of tender yeah. for a second. I think, that's, nobody I think that's the right word. Nobody's right swiping. Too, but, you Nobody's know. swiping, Bear. <laughs> I was wondering. I don't know. I might swipe right. There you go. <laughs> uh, Come here, but anyway, I think it's ten, tender. I think you're, what's the, whatever. What is supposed to whatever you use to start fire? Yeah, yeah, no, fire you're, you're correct. You're, yeah, yeah. No, he was just messing okay. with you. Okay. I know very little about the internet. No, it's fine. <laughs> Anyways, so I pick up this comic book because it looks old, and if, if I leave it out there, it's just going to mold and mildew away. And so I get home, I whip out Google, and I find out it's a Brave and the Bold 28, which is the first appearance oh, of the wow. Justice League. Of yeah. all the comics mm. to find there, yeah. it's a Brave and the Bold 28. And this thing is a rag. The cover's falling off. There's a piece missing out of, the, out of it. Not going to get that it, PSA grade on that bad boy. A CGC, mm. but good a CGC, try. CGC, yeah. <laughs> so... I'm like, okay, so I, I figure out, oh, this is worth a little bit of money. And it's worth like two or three hundred bucks. So I'm like, well, there's apparently money in, in, in older comics. Yes. So as fate would have it, we got a decent little tax return that year. And so I started doing a little bit of research. And so I bought like an Avengers 1 oh, in wow. like 7 So it was a nice copy. Mm. And then I sold it and made a few hundred dollars. Well, with that money, then I took that and bought two CGC books. Mm. Then two became four, four became eight, and it was like a bunch of rabbits that are sitting around, and all of a sudden you got a lot of baby <laughs> yeah. rabbits. And so before I knew it, we had a full-fledged online comic store called Columbia Comics, and we were wow. selling, you know, thousands of dollars of comics every month, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. We would travel, we would go to shows. I, mm. We've been to New York Comic Con, I've been to Chicago Wizard World when it was a thing. We've been to New oh, Orleans wow. Wizard World, Megacon, wow. you know, all up and down the East Coast and the Midwest. I've been to California, never been to San Diego, would love to go, definitely not this year. Yeah. But, yeah. so we kind of had this full-fledged business. And so a lot of people would say, well, are you going to open a <laughs> store? And I work for the state, and then, you know, serve on Blythewood Town Council, which we can come back to later. Okay. And, you know, I'm a dad. I have two kids. And, you know, just I said, no, I don't have time for a store. I don't want sure. the overhead. It's just it's just a lot of work. Aggravating. And if you're not the one running it, it's going to end bad. Right. right. Can I ask you this real quick, just to interject? Sure. Did you read the comics that you were getting as well at the same time? No. No? <laughs> Too many. But, to I don't, but I don't need to read the actual ones because you can go read yeah, sure, comics right, online. online. Sure. Um, I actually do. I actually have a, a decent little comic art collection. And I'll actually go and look at the pages on there, the, mm. the, the twice up Silver Age pages and stuff. Sure, sure. So that's actually I'll go look at that and I'll read the text and all that stuff. That's kind of cool. Nice. But anyway, so at some point, you know, 2014 or so, let's just say, people started saying, you know, you're going to open a store. You're going to open a store. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not going to open up a store. Mm. And but we got to thinking, well, it might be a good idea to have another source of income. It might be a good idea to, you know, we've, we've had a tremendous amount of experience setting up at shows. I set up in shows in Charlotte and, and other places. And so we've been vendors, we've been attendees. And so the logical step was, well, Columbia doesn't really have the kind of show yeah. that we've attended and that we would like to attend. Mm. Go to Megacon. It's a completely different show versus your one day flea market event or something like that. So we said, you know, Let's see if we can create an event that we would like to attend or and and or like to vend at. Right? Yeah. And that's kind of how uh, 
Soda City Comic Con was born. I didn't come up with the name. My ex-wife, Mary, came up with the name. I'll give her credit for that. Um, and then, so it was the two of us. And then we reached out to a gentleman who I met on Craigslist. Don't let your minds go there. Hey, man. I was hey. selling comics on Craigslist. Whatever. We met up at Liberty. Hey, look, whatever Funny you want to do, That's man. where we found Barrett. <laughs> well, I, I, unfortunately, he didn't answer my Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, a gentleman named Steve Powell did answer my Craigslist ad, and we met up and had lunch, and he, at the time, he worked for WIS, and we said, hey, we've got this venture that we're thinking about, uh, thinking about starting. Mm-hmm. Do you want in? And he's like, yeah. And so... We kind of started, you know, we started with scratch. We, you know, we, we put our little bit of money in and, you know, we started the event. And somewhere along the line, Steve reached out to another person that he knew. Her name was Jennifer. Uh-huh. And brought we brought her in as, as our third partner. And she had a lot of event management and she owned her own uh, ad agency. She's actually responsible why Amy's here because Amy reached out to her quite a few times before Jennifer responded nice. uh, to volunteer because Amy's volunteered at Dragon Con many, for many, many times prior very to nice. Soda City. Um, now she's our operations manager and she's a very valuable member of our family, oh, yeah. not just our team. She's our family. She also yeah. she also takes care of my kids when I need her to. She's been my kid's nanny all through COVID when they were wow. yeah, at home and stuff. So a- Amy is family. Love the little Absolutely. Brothers. But, you know, so in 2015 we launched. We got two like kids a, over here too. So just oh, a, a couple kids actually. So. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about you and this guy. No, I well, was gonna say, no which he's got his own. I got my own. He said making, he got a new one. They're making a Well, comparison. basically, we got... Oh, yeah, mine's two. Mine's That's four. Pretty mine's four. So. Okay, mine are 10 and 12, so okay. they're a little more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, so we, you know, we launched in 2015. Like I said, we had the flood, um, but we learned a lot from that. If we learned if we can survive that type of uh, <laughs> yeah. environmental disaster, we can survive anything. Yeah. But... You know, Saturday was was a bang up success. If we had only been a one day show, it would have been great. Yeah. But you know, we, we we wanted to make an event that people would want to hang around with for two days, and we've definitely I think we've gotten there now. Um, you know, we've gotten to the point where, no pun intended, since we started in the flood, it's a wash rinse for Pete. Uh-huh. <laughs> it kind of is. It, it kind of is now because we. I mean, I don't want to say that we we know what we're doing. But we have a pretty good idea of yeah. what we're doing. You know, Correct. we make incremental changes. But, you know, if people look at last year versus this year, the floor plan is going to be the same. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Sure. You know, we've, we've got kind of everything laid out. People are starting now to learn exactly where everything is in the building. And that's another – that is the, probably the biggest challenge we faced, mm. other than getting the word out for the event, is, is teaching people how to do an event that they've never seen before. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I, I can think, only imagine. I think that's one of the successes of, like, Dragon Con in Atlanta is the fact that – you know which hotel yes, is going to house which 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 right. sci-fi and, genre yeah. or whether it's mm-hmm. anime. And Amy or, can definitely speak to speak to events like that. Oh because. yeah, I'm I volunteer in the information services at oh, DragonCon, yeah. so I'm one of those people that sits at the booths and gives you directions. Oh and nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're right. It is very well documented, and we've been working on that. We have been setting up and streamlining all of that. Um, that's been one of the things he and I've been working very hard to get that set where it's consistent. Yeah. And people know where to go because people as a group are not always the brightest. No, no, no. no Especially no. when they have somebody dumb leading them. We're, we, <laughs> you have that herd mentality. We're, we're right? not going to talk about modern politics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's what Samuel Jackson, uh, not Samuel Jackson. Yeah, about Tommy, say. That's what Tommy Lee Jones said in Men in Black is mm. uh, people are dumb, a person is smart. Exactly. And you have the individual, individual that's smart, but as a group, people are dumb. And so you just try to if you make it simple, keep it simple, stupid, yeah. yep. and tell them where things are. Then they can make those decisions from there. And the more information they have up front, the better they can plan. They know what they want to do. And it makes them more excited because they feel like they can do more. Correct. Right? Because yeah. when you're looking at an event, you're like, oh, what is there to do? Oh, cool. Wait, where is that? Can mm. I plan these things all at once? Where's the, the map? Let's, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it. we've worked on getting that set up um, on a QR code. Yep. Nice. Very online. Cool. yep well nice. covid covid was pretty much responsible for that yeah, yeah. because everybody QR learned codes, oh yeah. but i don't have a menu that i can touch well, well i got this hey, qr, QR so code, boom yeah. and then yeah and so then it's at their if, fingertips. if you can yep. order a beer through your qr code you can go and find your place exactly. right yeah. you, you yeah. can order anything now with oh, a yeah. with the code. qr you right yeah, we 100%. made people vote with QR codes. Yeah, we did. That's right. <laughs> we did. That's right for that thing we're not allowed to talk about yet. Correct. Mm. So, to, to the short answer to your question is the Justice League is responsible for the com- for the coming of Soda City Comic Con. <laughs> wow, because that's the answer. Uh, that's ultimately Justice what League. led to it. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, the Justice that, League. I have ever since the first time y'all came out and we started hearing about it around 2015, uh, I've wanted to go. 
because I've always wanted to go to the E3s, the San Diego Comic Cons, mm -hmm. the Dragon Cons. I never yep. had the ability or means to do it. And even through the years, it was the time to do it. Right. And then when Trent had mentioned that he found y'all's flyer, I was like, all right, yeah. I'll go find yeah. that. Like, how do we get in contact? Yeah, like, we're ready yeah. now. Yeah, like, because like, I used to work at Wit Ass, so I used to always see the people dressed up as, like, furries walking down the street. I'm like, where is everybody <laughs> going? <laughs> yeah. And it was straight to Comic-Con. So it's, how did y'all get that building? Because that building is not easy to get. Can't nobody just really walk up and get that building? Well, if you write them a check, they'll let you rent the whole building. You got a point. You got a point. You got a point. So You're right. It, you can pay for it. Yeah, we've kind of settled in on our dates. It's kind of like the third weekend in August. Okay. We, we try to be the weekend after move-in weekend. Unfortunately, we fell on move-in weekend this Ooh. year, but that's that's okay. It'll be all right. Yeah. Um, Just a lot of parents in Land Rovers dropping their kids off, Range <laughs> Rovers and stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't know any of those, those sorts. I, don't, I can't even spell right now. <laughs> so, but you know, we've kind of settled in. We, we did have that one year in 2021 when we had to move back because the restrictions weren't yeah. lifted uh, at the time, or we weren't sure at the time we had to make a decision if the restrictions were going to be lifted. We didn't have a necessarily a max capacity, but at the time when a decision had to be made, there was a, a capacity of like, yeah. you know, 250 people. I'm like, we can't have an event yeah. with that 200, 250 yeah, people. Nah. And one goes in, one goes out. No, this ain't the nightclub. Yeah, basically. So, yeah. you know, other than that, we try to settle into that third weekend in August. And that, you know, that way everybody expects, you know, August, so to see Comic-Con. Yep. And that's going to be, that's actually my challenge for the next year. Um, as I said, Steve and I are the co-founders and the owners. Jennifer stepped away a couple of years ago. And the, I think the biggest challenge for us now is we've got an event that's established. Yeah. We believe that our goal for this year is to, is to crack 10,000 attendees. We've okay. come close. Mm -hmm. Last year was close, but we didn't, we didn't break the goal. You that's that always our goal. You hear that nothing is we need every one of you to come out. Yeah, we yeah, need to get absolutely. that. But get even that at 10, the same 000. time, I feel like anime is like at an all time high right now. Oh, like it's extremely everybody's popular. Oh yeah, on it. Like that's all I see on TikTok. That's all I see. Dude, COVID came. COVID came around. And that's when I started watching One Piece. Yeah, exactly. A yeah. lot of people. Have you watched me. all thirteen or fourteen hundred episodes? Oh or my something? god, no. That's it's so much. <laughs> it's like it's always on in my house now. Though, mm. like we're always watching One Piece. And I'm like, I got. Don't play Xbox. Let's watch One Piece because I try to do that. Two things at one time, all yeah. the time. It's excellent, though. I love it. I haven't started that one. No, and me it, neither. And the number of episodes is probably the uh, deterring factor, yeah. simply because there's there so many, and they're still making it. Yeah. And now there's a live action. When the live action started, I was like, damn, I know I'm late to the party. They're already doing a live action. Yeah. I'm like, all right. You know, we're late, but you know, you, it's never too late when it comes to anime. You want to know what live action series I'm actually really excited about? Mm. What's that? Avatar. That'll be good. The last Airbender. That is, in my opinion, that's that is probably the best. It's not. It's not anime, but it's like an anime cartoon blend. Yeah. yeah, yeah if yeah, they yeah. make it like Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon, it worked. Well, I, that's that's to, the best. That's the best cartoon I've ever watched from start to finish. Yeah. I, I loved it. It's Every bit good. of it. Every bit of it. Yeah, because yep. the they. They learned their lesson with M. Night Shyamalan's version, right? You're like, here's what we absolutely do See, not See, but do. I, en I, I enjoyed that, though. But it wasn't, it, it didn't. It, it didn't go along with the, with the cartoon that was there. It didn't, it didn't there. do anything anybody wanted it to really do. Sure. Except for like, here's your characters, we bastardize them. <laughs> like, sure. But, yeah, but it's M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. I mean, does he ever do what anyone wants him to do? No, no. And, and think about Honestly. this. Honestly. Sign scared me. Think about the younger. Mortal Kombat movie. I laughed my way through. Which that. one? The first one? The well, first one was awesome. It was amazing. It was awesome. But that. when you go back and look at it, still it's awesome. like, but it's, it's okay, still, we it, let them. It's still awesome. I, we it, let them it, get it, us a little bit. But that's yeah, like, it holds, <laughs> it holds for me. I, I can watch that movie. Mm. That's that's probably my top 10. Yeah, the absolutely. first Mortal Kombat. Because think about it. When Sub-Zero and Scorpion walk out on Shang Tsung's yeah. ship and you're like, Oh, the oh. thing comes out of his hand. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Nowadays, it's, like bad, it's, it's it's bad animation, but it's amazing. it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter when they both walk out on that well, ship and they're like, "Oh, we're about to rumble in mm. the bottom of Shang Tsung's ship," and you're like, "That's it." <laughs> oh, we just our, the video game that defined Sega. Correct. Yeah. It's yeah. come to life, yeah. and you're like, "Oh man, even, this is even, so awesome!" It was good. Even it really Goro, was. It really even was. Goro being Goro was great. Practical, yeah. practical uh, puppet or whatever was amazing. Yeah, and getting the Johnny Cage nut shot. <laughs> oh yeah, they get like, Johnny Cage nut shot. The new, yeah, the new, right. the new Mortal Kombat movie didn't have Johnny Cage and no nut shot. I liked it. I thought it was good. Yeah, the next one's gonna have Johnny Cage with Carl Urban playing Johnny Cage. Ooh, oh, Ooh. Which is gonna be very cool. Ooh. I'm down with Carl Urban. Anything. I'm down with Carl Urban too. <laughs> well, I don't know about the rest of. I don't know the rest of Mr. you McCoy, guys. Mr. McCoy, be me aboard. <laughs> but I kind of liked Bridget Wilson as Sonya Blade. Oh she yeah. Was, oh yeah. 
Mm. It's gonna be rad. It, yeah, it'll be it'll be uh, Margot Robbie being Sandra Blake. Right, so, uh, it can't wow. be Barbie. No, no, yeah, it, it she, can be. She would probably be good, but she's already she's already doing other stuff. We need a who fresh, would make a good Sandra Blake in the new one. Sonya Blade, blonde. I can tell you who. Oh, 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 oh so, uh, sweetie. Uh, what's the sweetie girl from? Um, oh, she's in like all the commercials now. From um, oh the ch- no, yeah, the no. sweetie. That's like, oh, what's her name? <laughs> you're, gonna uh, to, you're gonna have to stew on it. Yeah, but yeah. while we have, we're talking one. about we're talking about famous names right here and right now. Did anybody see the uh, the newest Tomb Raider? Yeah, I thought I think she, she would make a yeah, she'd yeah. make a good Sonya Blade. Her name? She uh-huh. might be. I can't remember her name. What was her name? Oh, she's like she's like Swedish or something. And now it's going to be the woman who played Agent Carter. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah uh, see, she's taking, uh, I was on the fence about her. Yeah, I, I'm still not like she didn't do anything for me in the she, Captain America movies. Alicia yeah. Vikander. Vikander. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought yeah, she, yeah. she'd make she a good, good. Sonya Blade. Yeah, yeah I I see that. she's yeah. very yeah. athletic and fit. You have to have that athleticism yeah. for well, sure. Well, speaking yeah, of yeah, know, yeah, speaking yeah, of celebrities yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and as far as uh, as far as the Soda City Comic Con Comic Con this year, uh, Sean Austin he's a big draw. You know, he I'm is. excited about that one. Uh, and I know, I know there are limitations on what we can describe as far as his career and things like that because currently, yeah. Uh, but that's based on the actor strike and. Uh, Honestly, I I don't see this ending anytime soon. No, I think I don't think so either. I think that we're looking at basically reality television for the next probably year, uh, as far as the content on. We'll get six months. Tom oh, Cruise is on annoying. it. Tom, Tom Cruise <laughs> just had a movie drop. That's the only reason why he's on it. Well, no, he's fighting for the stuntman and the AI. Thing yeah, it's right not. Now. Yeah, it's not just. It's it's not just actors. It's the stuntman. I mean, it's extras. I mean, these are. I think Scientology's. Yeah, gonna, I had to. Gonna, I, gonna, I gonna, gonna, to gonna keep making like, movies. I was like, dude, explain this to me because uh, it seems like rich people movies, are pissed, man. and I don't they understand. Don't care. And <laughs> then once you get it, it's not just. It's not the big actors. It's it's the it's other. The ones. It's the other it, ones. What it, it's also, but it's also the rich people pissed off that people are asking for their money. Right. True. And it's the fact that these streaming services are still not putting any single bit of like a single bit of money into the technology that they're get. That basically, if if you're on Amazon, Netflix, Disney, and you have an issue, and you know it's not on your end, it's because of their software or the limitations of the bandwidth available. They're not doing anything to improve that. They're basically just saying, "Well, you're subscribed, so suck it up." So. Yeah. You know, you got it, your money. I, I, passing the savings on. We'll you. give you a month for free. I, I right look back. at it. I no, look at it as there's. <laughs> if the actors win out on this and they get what they want, then there is the potential that we get what we want, and that's better service. Yeah, but we're gonna so, have to pay for that. That means Netflix is gonna have to go up. That means all these streaming companies. But you have, have to go choice. up. But to unsubscribe from these services now is such an ass. It's it's a pain oh, in the ass well, anyway. Paramount and uh, Peacock make it. A chore. Oh, they all uh, Paramount go. I, I was un, I'm subscribing to Paramount, and they were like, "Go back to the device that you subscribed on." Mm. I was like, well, "Wait a minute. What wow. if I threw the TV away? Then what do right. I do? Yeah. Like, we're, we're, like seriously. What if my phone was stolen? Yeah. yeah. Do I have to call pa- Mr. Paramount? Yeah. Like, do you, is that what I need to do? <laughs> So that's, that's when it's easier to change your bank account or the yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to one that's defunct and then they'll go. Yeah, now I have to block you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I've been so for this year though, we got Sean o- Aston. Sean, Sean Aston. Aston. Yep. Uh, Christina Ricci's on the bill right now. Yep. She is. Uh, and we've also got Vanessa Angel, and then a slew of uh, voice actors. Yep. Can we talk about how amazing Vanessa Angel is? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, exactly. One of my first crushes watching Kingpin. Yeah. I was just like. There she is, an angel, Vanessa Angel. My God, <laughs> that's her real name too. I know it uh, really is. It's her real name. As soon as, as soon as, like, I uh, we were talking to you guys, I was like, dude, I told my brother, it's like you got to come up. I was like, you remember the really beautiful girl from uh, Weird Science? Yeah, Weird Science, the TV uh, show, yeah. all that. And I was like, you, Kingpin. He was like, oh yeah, the beers in the fridge thing. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was like, oh, I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, she's amazing. Are you selling tickets by, by, by mentioning I, I, her? I was getting my brother up here. I see what you're doing. What, uh, what, is it, what does it generally take to get uh, actors of, of, of that caliber that, that have that type of genre in their, in their background? Yeah, what's that process going to find someone? It's not, <laughs> it's not as hard as you would think. Okay. Agents? Yes, there are agents. A lot of times, <laughs> I don't want to come across as sounding arrogant or pompous. No, do it. We do it all the time. Well, <laughs> especially. But yeah, 
I feel like you know you've made it when you've got vendors at New York Comic Con saying, hey, there's a show in South Carolina called Soda City Comic Con. Oh, and the wow. other guy goes, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. When your event is... Is a, is a discussion point on the floor of New York Comic Con. I feel like you've made it, right? Yeah, right. yeah absolutely. So a lot of it is people reaching out to us. Mm. Gotcha. That's awesome. Yeah. So from that standpoint, a lot of the legwork is done by the agents. They'll say, "Hey, you know, I saw, I you know, I, I saw your event, or I heard about your event, or we saw content on YouTube. Mm. We don't have our own YouTube channel. Big mistake on our part. We'll get to it. Sure. Not the, the, the not the." Top it's priority to right list. now. Yeah, it's on the to-do list. Okay. Listen, we can help you guys. We got thousands Plenty of, of cameramen we knew. Yeah. Like my, my, I told you, my, my skills on technology is very little, very limited. So, you know, people, people reach out to say, hey, saw your show, you know, read about your show, da, da, da. And I've got this list of clients and we'll go through it and it'll be, again, I don't watch a whole lot of TV. I most mainly watch streaming or some sports. Big Carolina Hurricanes fan, love hockey. Okay. So, you know, th- we'll go through a list of, you know, there'll be 40 people on the list. Mm. And, I mean, I'll recognize two of them. Mm. Oh, no. And and so we're like, That's okay, we know this person, activity. this person. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll send a text to Amy like, hey, have you seen so-and-so? Have you ever heard of so-and-so? Oh, have you seen this? Or Steve was like, oh, yeah, they were in this horror movie in 1987 and have this you, other horror yeah. movie in 1984. And, like, it was the first Do you know who person. Bruce Campbell is? <laughs> well, I know who Bruce Campbell is. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, like, like, yeah, name, name, name the other... 47 people Correct. in Evil Ash or whatever True. that movie Fair is. Enough. I don't Fair know enough. them. Fair but like apparently there's like a genre of like the first girl to get killed on, on camera uh. in that movie. That's like a thing. Like people like that. Uh, yeah. They like okay. to collect autographs or, or know who yeah. these actresses are. Or like, you know, the first girl in the the Friday the 13th in the waterbed that gets killed. Like she's uh. made a she's made a career out of being, being her. the first yeah. kill yeah. Yeah. in Friday the 13th. That's right. Like, That's I, dope. I, I, I wouldn't know this. I mean, I don't. That, that doesn't well, nor should you. Yeah, yeah. Nor should you. The, yeah. fan, the yeah. fans well, should know. Yeah, that's, that's fandom. Yeah, they do. It works. Yeah. It's cool because Steve knows all the horror stuff. Steve knows, knows a lot about horror. The comic and anime, and I do. We do watch culture anime. And sci-fi. Okay. So between See, the Amy, three of us, we have friends. I'm big sci-fi fan. I, you know. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Just saying, Firefly season two. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all even have matching beards. Oh, oh wow. okay. Oh, on that, is. on that, let's right. take it. I'm sorry. Let me ask him. Let me ask him. I gotta ask he him real quick. This is, this, is what, about yes, this is what family does. Yeah. Oh, he forgets oh, I have yeah. a key to his house. Yeah. <laughs> and a map to take it down. But when we were talking about the list, have you ever seen Wesley Snipes' name pull up on that list, man? And do you think Wesley single handedly saved Marvel by Blade? Well, he's not saving the U.S. government because he still owes them a bunch of money. <laughs> Correct. Correct. So, passenger, 50, passenger 47. That was, that was his account. 57, 57 always yeah. bet on black. That's one of my favorite yeah. lines. <laughs> yeah, you play roulette. Do I think Blade saved the Marvel Universe? Uh, no. Actually, I think Iron Man saved it when... Uh, yeah, I agree with that. When, when, the fir- when the first... Blade was a good movie, but mm. I don't think people really connected those dots. Mm-hmm. They looked at Blade yeah. as, oh, it's a cool vampire, yeah. vampire killer that is half vampire and he takes some serum from mm-hmm. Jeff Bridges or whoever that was. Um, oh, man, that's uh, that's Chris Christopherson. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, right. I thought it looked like, I don't know, like I said, yeah, I don't watch a lot of TV. Yeah. Whistler, I, have seen, I have seen Blade. Yeah. And maybe the second one and maybe the third one, too. That's I don't correct. know. I mean, they're all good. They're all good. But no, I don't think people connected the fact that Blade was Dracula's Arch enemy yeah. in Tomb of Dracula. Right. Blade mm-hmm. shows up in Tomb of Dracula 10. Yeah. See, now I know about vintage comics. I can mm. talk about first yeah. appearances. That's Blade's first appearance. But but most people mm. have no clue that Blade was, uh, you know, started uh, from comics. And or that, it, yeah, that that was a Marvel. Yeah, that, that was Marvel a Marvel character. It yeah. says that at the beginning, when it first came out, I remember it was like, sorry guys, I'm, I'm young. Yeah. But like, I, I think I was about 14, 15, something like that. And I was like, Marvel? Yeah, like, it I freaks like, you out. Yeah, you yeah, was like, like, what? like, I was like, hold on, like Iron Man. I was a big, I was an Iron Man fan even as a little kid. I was like Iron Man. Mom? Mm-hmm. But the what they did, what they were able man? to do, is they took <laughs> a B character at best at the time. Oh and, yeah, and, and made him the made man. Him cool. Oh yeah, my they God. took Marvel Robert Downey guy. Jr. Yep. and they made Iron Man cool. Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted to be Iron yep. Man. Yep. I'll admit, when I first saw that movie, I was blown away. I said, wow. If I had enough money to build myself an Iron Man suit and fly around and, and <laughs> shoot tanks and oh, all yeah. that stuff, I'd be the coolest guy in the world. It made everybody want to be Tony Stark. And listen, and I was it, ahead of the curve, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Fifth grade, we had to write our own books that they would publish. They used to do that kind of you thing. You trendsetter. 
Uh, mine was an Iron Man book that I wrote, mm. like through and through, and drew my own Iron Man and stuff. And then when they made the movie, I was like, ah, my boy. Because yeah. people truly didn't care. Like, unless you were reading comics, they didn't care. They yeah. they yeah. knew your Captain Americas and your Spider Mans, correct? Basically. And, but Wolverine, and, and, and no, Batman, and Wolverine. And, yeah, yeah, Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. But then you had your DC with your Batmans and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But then, like, Iron Man, would that have been your first pick to like truly do it? Because Spider Man was the one they went after Blade. They were like, right, all yeah. right, Sam Raimi, come do Spider Man now. Yeah. 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 I mean, but Marvel Studios at the time, Marvel as a company, didn't have the the rights to those characters. So they sold them off to avoid bankruptcy. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But that's, they had they had to sell off the properties that had some value at the time. That's why Sony ended up with I think Spider Man and X Men. Right. That's why Universal uh, had Hulk. Yeah, they yeah. had the Hulk. Um, the, somebody got Fantastic Four. I think Fox and Fox bought the Fantastic yeah. Four and the mm-hmm. X Men. Um, so you know they had to do what they needed to do just to survive. Yeah. They did it though. It was and, rad. but so they had to, they had to deal with the cards that they had left, and they had Thor, they had Iron Man, mm-hmm. um, they had Loki. They had. I'm trying to think of some of the other Captain characters. America, they had Mouse. Captain America. They yeah, had. They had yeah, they still had Captain you said America. They sold it to the mouse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they, the mouse got it. Well, but what they did is is Marvel built a franchise that was large enough that was rivaling Disney as far as uh, sales and, and ticket sales and mm-hmm. things like that. And Disney said, you know, we, we this is something we can't compete with because we can't create the IP necessary to to do this. We yeah. can we can do. We can do two Moana movies. We can do we mm-hmm. can do two Aladdin movies. Yep. We can you know we can do we can do another Lion King. But mm-hmm. these are all going to go straight to straight to digital or DVD sales. Correct. And and they said they said this is something. So they put eighty four billion dollars on the table, and Marvel said, "Yeah, we'll come be a part of Disney yeah. because, because they were about would. to be a failing company. All they were already failing. Yeah, yeah. Even in comics, all across the board." But no, I mean, I mean the merger. The merger that recently. Was a big merger, yeah. The, the Marvel, Marvel had Mar- What Marvel had was something that they could. And same thing with DC. Like DC was not doing great financially when Warner Brothers came along and said, "Yeah, we'll buy that." Well, you know, what's the saying? There's no new original ideas in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you can't, if you can't make it, buy it. Yeah. yeah. And that was just it was an easy. I mean, Lucas. They bought Lucas Films for like six billion dollars or something. Yeah. It was, re- it was a ridiculously cheap purchase, and it's paid trillions of dollars probably in oh. in value and 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 dividends back to back to disney and now and now we're power. guaranteed we with with lucas arts being owned by disney we're guaranteed investment into so many new stories including including what they're doing with some of the disney or the the star wars stuff is they're they're using fan stories i mean they're they're building mm. a lot of that stuff into it and it's and I, I, everything I, dave filoni does was a fan going they brought yeah. some non-canon star wars into mandalorian yeah, yeah. but that's okay when because people like thrawn, that which yeah, i was yeah. like why are we not getting more thrawn yeah and yeah. now we get I mean, uh, ahsoka a, and thrawn and all and of thrawn, yeah. the whole series and yeah. i was like what just happened <laughs> hey speaking of dragon con author of hand of thrawn bumped into him at Dragon Con. I yeah. was like, okay, your directions are this. And by the way, love your books. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Total fangirl moment that I will acknowledge. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's take a break. We're going to, we'll come back here after the break. Uh, we're sitting here with Amy and Brock from Columbia Comics. They are the organizers of the 2023 Soda City Comic Con, as well as all of the other 2020 or the other Soda City Comic Cons. And the ones in the future. Hopefully and too. all the <laughs> ones in the future. No, <laughs> this is, this we're going to help you grow, man. Yeah, Where's this the- is, it's, it, we're, we're very excited to have you here. So uh, when we come back, after the break i think we're going to get into some questions about uh the uh our, our your opinions on different things whether it's sci-fi that's, or fantasy or comedy scary comic. yeah <laughs> no we're not going politics today though no we, we can talk a little bit about that I, but, I, have, I have a little inroads on that okay, okay. but uh yeah because uh he's a council member for the uh, town of blythewood that's which uh, is responsible for and i'm, I'm not going to pronounce we the have name a lot of, of politicians on this show uh the, the rib fest <laughs> it's doko yeah doko mm-hmm. doko rib fest. doko rib fest that's right and, mm. and and you guys haven't been to it but i've been oh, to that's it the twice get us to get the ribs yeah. from holy cow yeah. we can talk about that he didn't yeah. bring us back ribs so he of course it's not. his fault i i he was I, supposed I, to bring us back i told brock ribs. on the phone i told brock on the phone earlier i was i, I was like you pay 20 dollars, you go in there and you get to eat all you get to try all the samples you want mm. it's 20 dollars is 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 not much to pay for something like that nah and so you, you last, get a lot less if you go to a restaurant well, and and i pay will $20. say these two went to transmission arcade to do a live show and Came back we bought you back with wings. We bought you back with wings. We didn't get you back a shirt. But let me just tell you. So Doko Doko uh, Rib Fest, it did change where you you pay uh, you pay to uh, get to uh, try yeah. the wings. So it's not one ticket price to go in. But 
I told Brock, I was like, and I told you guys after I had like. Well, I can six imagine tries, that could be expensive. I was, bought a trigger. I was so full. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't eat another thing. So anyway, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that stuff when we come back. This is the All About Nothing podcast. This is the ghost of Gilbert Godfrey, and you're listening to the All About Nothing podcast. All right, welcome back to the All About Nothing podcast. Barry Gruber, Zach King, Trent Clark, welcome guys. Did you enjoy your break? I love my break. I breaks. try to fit those in every every episode. Thanks. I mean, we get yeah. so much talking done during Good the break. Good break with great company. <laughs> we are, uh, of course, joined by uh, Brock and Amy from Columbia Comics and uh, the Woo! organizers of the 2023 Soda City Comic Con. Uh, thank much you guys excited. for being here. We're very excited to uh, to have you on the show. And uh, Very grateful that you guys are here. No, thank you. Thank yeah, you again. Thank you here. all three for having us. No, it, honestly, you guys are much more established than we are, and uh, it, it helps us. So. Oh. <laughs> The blind squirrels find nuts. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just get lucky. Yes. So that's or just find the right phone number. <laughs> or just find the right phone Zach, number. You're you know crazy, I mean? but you're the right kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. As soon as I'm done eating these paint chips, I'll be over there. <laughs> Were they lead paint? <laughs> Only the best. <laughs> Why? Only yeah. the best. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, right now, we're in a bit of a turmoil with this uh, actor strike. Yeah. What sort of an effect is that having on the uh, the event coming up? Not good. Yeah. And I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek. It essentially, it doesn't prevent personal appearances. It doesn't prevent anybody from getting an autograph, getting a photograph, you know, talking, speaking to their, you know, their celeb of choice. Yeah. It, it, Full disclosure, it has nothing to do with anime and voice acting. It's only scripted on screen, uh, television and movie, mm. actors and actresses. Uh, Sean uh, has to sign my copy of Encino Man or I will throw a fit. He, <laughs> he, 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 they, you know, that is actually a question that they've actually posed. Like, can oh, yeah, they sign, not supposed can to. They sign uh, merchandise or items from struck, they call them struck, struck uh, companies or struck content. Or mm. something, you know? And the answer is actually is yes. Cool. If you present the item to the Sean Aston in this example, mm -hmm. he will sign it. He can't actually promote any of his prior work. Oh, so he can't sell. give you like a, correct. Oh, okay. He can't, he can't, uh, for example, give you a eight by 10 movie poster headshot yeah. of him as a character from a movie mm -hmm. where they little indie movie like Oh, we'll, be, say right. we'll be cautious yeah. about which ones we yeah. 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 You might, <laughs> we might want to edit that out. Yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah. You know, he, he, can't, he can't promote any content. And technically speaking, we're not really supposed to promote any content gotcha, either. Gotcha, so okay. we've kind of gone back. We've scrubbed our website. We, we've kind of acquiesced to what they're looking for. Obviously, there's some things we just can't do. Like if right. we have promotional material that's already been printed and been distributed, well, it's out there. I look at it like this. Like Common Sense kicks, kicks in where you say, okay, We've had we've got A, B, C, and D. We've already done like we've already done Facebook posts. Sometimes you just can't go back and delete Facebook right. posts. Yeah. Sometimes you can't go back and remove Instagrams or yeah. or whatever. And you know, all this stuff took place prior to the strike. Sure. So in my opinion, since this show's based on a lot of opinions, I feel like that we and any other show promoter should be in the clear because we were acting in good faith at that time. Right. Correct. If we did it now, then you're then you're acting in, sure, in bad sure. faith. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the position I take. Like they asked us, hey, can you go back and remove reference to A, B, and C on your website? Yes, because we control our website. Right. We, have, right. we control that content. Do I control the content on Facebook? To a point. Yeah. Do I control what other people are going to do, what other people are going to say? No. No. Right. Yeah. So, you know, can you get your copy of whatever movie signed by Sean Aston? Yes. Okay. Can Sean Aston give you uh, a picture of that individual or that no. character that he portrayed? No, not currently. Okay. Could that change by August 19th? Sure, it could. Do I think it's likely? Mm, probably not. I'll fly out there. I'll talk to some people. <laughs> I got to get, the, get I your rubber get stamp the, on that. Yeah. You got that handled? Trenton, Trenton, I'll go out there and Silent Bob this whole thing. <laughs> And one of you will be stoned sometimes. and the other one won't speak. Oh, definitely. One of us definitely will be stoned. Nice. <laughs> this is a family friendly event. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with, with that in mind, as far as uh, the, the, the actors and, and, and voice actors and, and yeah. such that are going to be there, have you all, have you all gotten a schedule set up as far as uh, when they're going to be appearing yet? As far as I know, everybody is scheduled to be there on both days, Saturday, Saturday, yeah, maybe not definitely. open to close, but you know, most people kind of get there ten thirty or so on Saturday morning. Okay, they'll stay there till five o'clock or so. As long as there's still people there, they'll stay. Um, Sunday we open at eleven. Most people are able to mosey over by eleven fifteen, eleven thirty, and then they're 
you know, uh, we have to work around uh, departing flights on Sunday. So, you know, some people will leave around four o'clock or so to get back to the airport sure. to make sure they don't miss their flights. Yep. Um, you know, some stay will stay till four thirty or so. We close at five. So, but the schedule will be posted. Oh, absolutely. At least a couple weeks in advance, yeah. at a minimum. A couple yeah. weeks. So in advance. you'll know when they're going to be in the celebrity hall. You'll know when they're going to be in the panel room. Yeah, et cetera. So you can plan accordingly. Yeah, we'll we'll have we'll have a panel schedule produced. We'll we'll have kind of a, a rough autograph schedule, autograph, photograph, professional photo ops, that stuff kind of thing posted um, on our website. On you just you know, go to featured guests, you click on their banners, and it'll have all that. It has their pricing on there too. So yeah. So and and the most important thing is people just need to pay attention to the website, which you can get Absolutely. to by uh, going through the allaboutnothing.com, and and you can find a ticket link and as well as information to the uh, to to the Soda City uh, Comic Con, which if you just want to go direct, it's SodaCityComicCon.com, yep. uh, which is a great. But they game. should come through your website. Yeah, they to should. Hit ours that way, that you, way we you, can track you it. get some clicks. <laughs> That's right. Correct. Uh, when uh, when can we expect to uh, have uh, an idea as far as uh, what it's going to look like as far as a crowd. Like when when will you all know how how well? That's tricky. That uh, yeah, that is tricky. Columbia, from what we can tell, is a very walk up last. minute. I was minute about to say thing. that it is. Yep. Yeah. They're very gotcha. walk up last minute. I learned that from um, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, St. So, Patrick's Day might not sell a lot of tickets, but the day of, oh man, it'll the be, lines out yeah. the door. Yeah, the it's week on. of the event. Mm-hmm. Let's just say, for example, just just to make numbers easy, let's say, for example, we're going to sell five thousand total tickets. Yeah. The weeks leading up, and we've had tickets on sale for months in advance. Sure. The weeks leading up, we might have sold five hundred tickets, ten percent of your okay. of your allotment online. The week of, we'll sell five x mm. that, mm. and then you'll sell the rest, or you'll sell mm-hmm. the comparable People number walk, walk up, you know, at the door. Which everybody says, "Oh, can I buy tickets on site?" Of course, you can buy tickets on on site at the door. You know, half yeah. our ticket sales come at the door. Yeah, I'd love for more to come at the door, but Meet that's at the, the door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. You know, that last week kind of gives you an idea of how strong the reception is going to be. Right. And I can say that each year, the number of online tickets or pre-sales, we used to call it will call, maybe not young, sure. young yeah, folks. I understand here. that. Well, we call it will call. call. Yeah, yeah. But now they call it pre-sales. That's the hip thing now. Correct, because you according, put them out now. Yeah, because <laughs> of Amy, according to we'll my research. Yeah. <laughs> but each year we have sold our online ticket sales has beat the prior year. Mm. So that nice. if, if we beat this year, we'll know that we should hopefully eclipse our goal of 10,000. And the, the cost for ticket sales this year is same as last year. It, it didn't go up. Is there a difference between buying them online early versus the day of, or no, is there normally. like a tier okay. of tickets that you can get? Is there a VIP ticket that you can get? Or yeah, something we, like we that? have a couple of VIPs for, for Christina Ricci and Sean Aston. Um, you know that like those type tickets, like it includes an autograph, a photograph. It includes guaranteed seating in the panel because mm. there's only you know 450, 500 seats in there. Those Correct. will fill up. Um, it includes admission. It includes like we have a, a, a branded lanyard. We have VIP yeah. badges. We give out. We have some really cool posters that we distribute out. Should have brought you guys some, but sorry, right. we, hey, we we'll, can cross that bridge. We'll see you again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you will. Yeah. We can cross that bridge. Um, you know, we try to throw in a couple of uh, a couple of cool things that you're not going to be able to get unless you buy the VIP package. Nice, very nice. Well, when it comes to what got you into either sci-fi or or fantasy or comics and things like that, um, we do have a couple questions as far as uh, how you relate or or which is better. Mm. Uh, so when it comes to a this or that, which I, I should have had, we played we played this or that a lot. So yeah, it, we should have, we should have had Black Sheep playing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> top five anime series. Ooh, you don't have to give it to us in order, and it can be like '90s cartoons because I I feel like that's anime too. Technically. Well, no, it's not. Technically, well, it's technically not. Well, it's technically not. I, I mean, because could... anime is a the Eastern. Yeah, yeah. And it's okay, different. it's a completely different style of. Art. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't want to disrespect them. No, no, no. I mean, I'm with you technically. <laughs> technically, cartoon is a okay. cartoon, but yeah. they if you're going to be real, part. real technical about it. Okay. Um, I don't know. Do you have an answer to that? I have an answer. I don't know if I can name five. I haven't watched five. Okay. <laughs> I, I I alluded to earlier that Avatar is probably Avatar: The Last Airbender is yeah, probably yeah. my favorite anime, and I guess that would fall under anime, Correct. although it is more cartoonish. Correct. And then you're traditional anime style, which I was watching a video yesterday. It's funny. And it said that all the anime characters are based on kittens. 
Hmm. Yes, I saw that too. You saw that? Yeah, saw you saw that? that? Yeah. yeah. I was they, like, they, 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 they want to use the word kawaii with kawaii translation to cute, eyes, right? The yeah, nose yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And that, so they, the Japanese, I guess, couldn't Proving think of anything weird. that was cuter than a kitten. A kitten yeah. And that's why all the characters are drawn like kittens. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I thought that, I thought, and I looked at it, I was like, you know what? They're absolutely Asians, right. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. The nose, the ears, the way they, the way they shake the face. It was so on point. I, I'm glad you yeah. saw that too. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Well, so I know Zach and Zach. Well, Zach among us uh, on the show is is oh, yeah. probably the biggest anime fan. I know Correct. if if I'm gonna name like I've seen Attack on Titan. I that's, thought that that's was fantastic. In, that's my top five. Avatar, Attack on Titan. We watch My Hero Academia. Yeah. We watch Demon Slayer. Yep. And my son really likes One Piece, so I'd probably throw One Piece in there because he's seen it. I've not really seen a lot of One Piece. Okay, um, I'm I've sure it's some of all of those. <laughs> what, what about Does Dragon? What about Dragon Ball Z? It. I never got into Dragon Ball Z. Uh, what about One Punch Man? Yeah, is, any, is anybody else you seen uh, One Punch Man? He just Man? looks like a peeled potato rocking yeah. around. I, just, yeah. I never got into it, but I, I know I, my brother-in-law loves it. Mm. Okay, all right. Like we're 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 wrapping up. Demon Slayer. We're in season three. Entertainment Demon District. Slayer, so good, so good. Yeah. Once we finish that, we'll probably move on to Hunter X Hunter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've Sorry. heard that's one a really good one. And yeah, then, my son watches that one for yeah, sure. I'm old school. I'm like the original Transformers, the original X Men. Mm. That's not anime. All that's those. cartoons. And I didn't say it was anime. I'm the one that made the argument that it was. She did. Anime. She did make the argument. <laughs> I, I can tell. See, I'll see? tell you, my, all, my, all mine are old. <laughs> I, mean, I go Dragon Ball Z, Dragon <laughs> thank Ball. Thank you. Okay. Yu Yu Hakusho, Ronin Warriors, and Gundam Wing. Like I oh. those are those are your like okay. we Amy. also That's watched nice um Yu Gi Oh. Yeah. I like Yu Gi Oh. Watch that Fox and we'll watch some Pokemon, stuff. some yeah. some of the Pokemon stuff. But I like Yu Gi Oh. See Yu Gi Oh used to come on Cartoon Network, right? No, yeah. Fox Morning. Yeah, it was Fox Morning. Oh, Fox Morning. That's yeah. right. That's right. Then you but now if we're gonna talk about classic cartoons, oh yeah, give me your classic '90s cartoons. Well, we can go back further than that. Yeah, we can go well, wherever you want to take it. But, you know, 90 was the golden era for cartoons. He was born, so he wants to know. Some of us were from the 80s. Well, I mean, but come on. Who's beating, who's really beating Rugrats? Who's beating Rocco's Modern Light? Who's I like really Rugrats. Beating, all Real Monsters. Who's beating, uh, I like Rugrats. well, All Real Monsters. Who's, who's really beating, I liked beating, Rugrats uh, until I had to watch it. Phineas and Ferb. Phineas Doug. and Ferb. Doug, yeah, Doug. You I know what I'm saying? It's some, it's some great 90s cartoons. X-Men huh? from the 90s was one of the best Tales cartoons. Tales of it. Gargoyles. I remember Gargoyles. Smurfs. Awesome. Yep. Masters I, of the Universe. I'm just going to watch those out there. I, I loved watching some of the Disney ones, like uh, Gummy Bears. and Gummy Bears was amazing. Bouncing here and there and everywhere. I loved Gummy Bears. Darkwing Duck. Okay. Tailspin. Uh, tailspin. 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 Was, oh I mean, my God. Tailspin. I, I classic. Still, I still Dude, get the Tailspin. Uh, uh, DuckTales? So, yeah, yeah, you get that Duck Tails. Dartwing Duck. Yeah. I mean, you heard that come on. Everyone's man. jumping around. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, I mean, if you're going to go 90s cartoons, though, you mm. got to go Animaniacs. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair. I give you that. And Tiny Toons. Yeah. Tiny Toons, definitely. Two were, those definitely. Were, those were, yeah, those were the 90s. Uh, but yeah, originally, what, anybody like Rand Stimpy? Of course. Yeah. 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 But I just, when, when, once I got older, I was like, I can't believe this was on regular TV. Like, yeah, no. the yeah. stuff that they were doing on Rand and Stimpy is like, crazy. Like, eating Stimpy's crap at one yeah, point. Yeah. Like, like, what what of, is going on? One of my favorite Rand and Stimpy. biting red butt. One of my favorite Rand and Stimpy, like, gag commercials that they used to run was the log. What rolls it's big, it's heavy, it's yeah, wood. It's what rolls it's log, downstairs and it's under log. chairs. It's yeah. It's better than bad. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't he humping the log? Right? He humped the log, if I'm not mistaken. He, <laughs> but they were trying to sell the log. Correct. Yeah, it was, it was a commercial for a log. I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it was I think they were the, making fun of the pet rock. It was exactly yeah. what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, okay, Ed, Ed, so Eddie. if you have to pick Come between on. one or the other, other Marvel or DC. Mm. Ooh. I mean, that's easy for me. I'm a DC guy. Okay, DC. Zach respects you so much more. Zach was like, I I was a huge Spider-Man, X-Men person until Mm. they screwed up all the movies. Okay. Okay. And then I'm just like, me. But I like those Spider-Man movies. You like Tobey Maguire, right? Oh, yeah. I, I thought like Andrew Tobe. Garfield was a really good Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Toby, she's a Toby fan. See, but they were Ooh. about to go like really crazy with with the fans. Oh man, yeah. They had the best bad guys. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that was why that yeah. one was so good. It wasn't Toby. Toby's like, eh. The bad guys, the villains in that yeah, the villains series were, great. were amazing. Yeah. Like when he had Venom on him and he just turned into an emo yes. kid, and you're yeah. just like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you like jazz and you have a bad attitude. What's going on? He's over here like. 
Yeah. I mean, they that one Doc was kind of. Yeah. But the prior two, Doc Ock, the Green Goblin. Yeah. Like those those, yeah, those yeah, were great. Those were really good Spider Man. Yeah. Something of a scientist myself. I'm yeah. excited that there is there are plans in the work for Spider Man Four with Tobey Maguire. There's plans in the Spider uh, Amazing Spider Man with uh, Garfield? with Garfield. I liked mm. him a lot. And we're gonna get three more Tom Holland Spider Man. Well, so, he said he's gonna take a break. You don't think so? He uh, already said he was gonna take a break. I suspect the money. He's will like, come. I played Spider Man to. To, the money's already came, Zendaya. Barrett. The and movie's now, out. He's no. getting residual well, checks. He's, he's, he's taking a break right now. Yeah. yeah. So this is his break. Yeah, right? this is his break. They're we taking are, a break right now. Oh, I want as many as they'll give me. We've basically gotten it confirmed that that uh, that uh, Iron Man is coming back. Well, you I know. just need him to bring. Robert, Robert Downey Jr. is going to be coming back as an AI in Ironheart. Well, yeah. maybe. Who uh, knows? So That could maybe work. You know, it's... All right. So. Just bring Wesley back and like make Blade Williams again. We can do Blade again. Yeah. Wasn't there rumors that that was actually going to happen? I think so, but I don't know, man. Wesley's a little bit too skinny now. No, they're doing... Uh, I cannot remember his name, but it's something Ali. Oh, it's the guy Marshall Arlie. Mustafa something. Mar- Marshall. Yeah, He's yeah, the guy yeah. that played mm. the evil guy on Luke Cage series. Yes. 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 Oh, he played... Right. Uh, yeah, okay. What was the guy's name? Um... Like switch, switchblade or something. Cottonmouth. Cottonmouth. That's yeah, probably yeah. switchblade. Yeah. Switchblade. Somebody else. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, next one. Uh, Star Trek or Star Wars? Mm. I'm in the middle. Oh, that's fair. I'm, 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 I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. Star Trek had me all up until they screwed everything <gasps> up when they messed up the Klingon backstory. Mm. <laughs> uh, they, they rewrote the Klingon backstory, and yeah. then I was like, I'm done. But. What Star you, Wars. Yeah. I'm 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 okay up until Andor. <laughs> what do you What do you think What do you think of the new Star Trek series? Like I, the, I, 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 you haven't I'm seen them. Not watching them. I, mm. oh, Wait, let me just tell you, Pike, Brave New World. Here's is my amazing. thing. Here's my Brave, is that the one on Paramount? Strange yeah. New Worlds. Strange, Strange New Worlds. Um, Strange, Strange New Worlds. I think is fantastic. What was the because one with the original Enterprise when they went back and it had the different um, song opening with what's his face? That's oh boy. Oh, uh, are you talking about? Uh, oh you're talking about the the Enterprise series with yeah, uh, the Enterprise. guy from. I couldn't watch that. That's the one they screwed up. But I then actually, when, I actually didn't see that series. Much when they of that brought one. in Discovery, that's the one. With, I uh, tried Leap watching guy. it. Sam Beckett. Oh yeah, Sam Beckett. Yeah. The Sam original Beckett. Enterprise, yeah. the first yeah. iteration. Yeah. Of Enterprise. I tried watching Discovery, and then I was like, "But this isn't true to the heart of Star Trek the way Roddenberry wanted it to be." Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's all about, or he was. God rest his soul. He's gone now. And May you rest in power. I mean, I'm just saying, beam me up, Scotty. But um, he, his thing was bring it out social stuff, right? Sure. All of those things and make it a family discussion. The way they did it, it is not family oriented. Yeah. Mm. And I'm like, okay, you just destroyed the heart and soul of Star Trek. Star Trek in its entirety was supposed to be a family show. Mm. I think one. And of I the, just felt like they rewrote it. I think yeah. one of the things that that Star Trek has been really good about is pointing out how the military industrial complex, despite the utopian society that Star it's Trek seems perfect. to have, yeah, it still completely operates under the guise that there is a military industrial complex that everything is going into. And that they that's always where, they always alluded to there's a no money society, but there's yeah. always transfer yeah. of funds and goods. So there was we need always your crystals. that. Somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> the dilithium crystals, yeah. the yeah. whole thing. You know, you the get your Ferengi system. in there for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll say this too: the most mind blowing Star Trek thing you can go do to go look at like older stuff is go watch Star Trek Nemesis and go yeah, see good. go see who's playing young Picard. I'd have. I don't remember at this. Who was Tom it? Hardy? Oh, oh yeah, that's really? right. That's like right. back in '99 or yeah, whatever it came yeah. out. You're, like I went back. And I was like, is that? Tom yeah, Hardy? It is. It is. <laughs> well, I will say that that I think Picard was a great representation of a a moving on from the next generation into uh the oh, See, I thought it was weird. They brought in a 7 of 9 who doesn't know anything about Picard, like really? Well, she was attached. She knew yeah, she, she knew Lacutus. She wasn't but was she in the board consciousness yes. at that point? Yeah, she was That's in the board. That's the question. Yeah, yeah. Like are your timelines. He said yeah, I needed a Riker. I don't <laughs> Riker for the now. record, I don't have a clue what any of them are talking about. Oh, you see me over here. I'm over here quiet. Star Trek at all. When, they, when they start getting into it, so, you got to let them go, man. I'm the Star Wars guy here yeah. cuz I don't my, have a clue no, what they're my talking old about. Roommate, let me put it to you this way. My old roommate, she's now married to this guy. Her now husband, when he went overseas, <laughs> shout out to him. Plug to Mary. I know, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Michael. Um, he left us his bookcase of Star Trek 
manuals for mm. all the ships and whatnot. And we may or may not have sent the entire summer that he was out of town discussing things via. <laughs> God. Like, yeah. When you're talking about the manual, you're talking about like how to repair something if it goes down. Oh, yeah. I mean, the castinator, yeah, was, get the was, castinator mat. The breakdown of what the ship. It was the, the breakdown ship. of the ship. Like That's how to, crazy. The map of the ship and everything. How you we were discussing it by episode name. How to, name. Trans, how to translate saying. the D cars? Uh, uh, yeah, y'all were Justin text. Long from Galaxy Quest. Trent, I don't know like, what I they said. Oh, let me just say, Galaxy Galaxy Quest, I think was one of Brilliant. the greatest comedic yeah. sci-fi Brilliant. movies ever made. I laughed till I cried. It was fantastic. <laughs> I have one job to press the <laughs> button. <laughs> so Star Wars, then um, that's for me. Yeah, so, yeah. We got, we'll we'll Star, we got Star, Star Wars and a both. And like I said, I think I think what Disney has invested into the Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars genre, I was think not is, worth it. You don't think it was worth well, it? I was talking about the park. Oh, I was talking about the park. Oh, okay. like nobody's spending five grand a night to go be in the oh, store. Oh, that, that, that didn't, didn't last very long. Yeah, they shut that down. There was a time if I had the money, I might have. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. If I could, if I could have figured out how to get in, get like, in on know, that for months, free. Right? Oh, I, I for sure would have. I would have just. I would have done the two nights. Me and my son just did it. We watched Ryan's World. He did it. it might, we were, we were there. <laughs> that was enough. We were there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. As long as Ryan's World can do it, my son feel like he's doing it. Two hundred dollar lightsabers going like. Listen, we got sticks and spray paint. Man, I just left Universal and Universal. Don't, don't had be cheap. Them. Laser lights, dude. Don't, don't be cheap. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll get fluorescent. Again. Ex- we'll figure it out. Experience. Yeah. Oh, those don't hold up very well. I will I, say. I know from experience. <laughs> yeah. I will say the rides at uh, that Disney that Disney's put in, mm-hmm. whether it was the the one where you're you're the you're you're doing the Millennium Falcon, and, and uh, I haven't gotten to do the newest one. Me neither. The, the but like. I, I like what Disney's done as far as investing in Star Wars and allowing Lucas Arts to continue to to do it the way they want to do it. There's Correct. not I think I think the only influence I really see as far as Disney is the fact that you see a lot of actors that have appeared in Disney stuff appear in the Star Wars movies now. Mm. And you see Kathleen Kennedy, 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 Kennedy. Well, you also you also get your star like Jack Black, your cameos. Yeah. Which I, that was great. You would yeah. never have gotten that with George yeah. Lucas. There's no way. I would have thought Bear would have had a hate for Kevin Jack Black. Smith was a, I wasn't love that Lizzo? <laughs> wasn't Lizzo it his was wife Lizzo. in that it episode? It, it, his wife was Lizzo. Oh, no, no, you're good. Daniel Craig was a, a star, stormtrooper. Yeah. And, uh, Simon Pegg was one too, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. I mean, yeah. Timothy Oliphant yeah. is yes. in. I mean, playing JJ Raylan like Gibbons like my friends are Star Wars. Wars. Basically, yeah, he's basically playing Raylan Gibbons from in Justified in Star Wars. Could you imagine if you if you if you shot a stormtrooper and the helmet fell off and you're like. I've killed Simon Pegg. Someone help me. I've killed Simon Pegg. <laughs> well, yeah, and the last one with Lizzo and Jack Black. What's his face that played the uh, the bad guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, oh, oh, I from can't. Back to the Future. Yeah, it was uh, it was Christopher Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. 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 Christopher Lloyd. Yes. Mm. I mean, Timothy Oliphant, by the way, is somebody that's been on our radar. Just FYI. Oh, I would I'm, love so some Timothy just, Oliphant. Just, that guy so, is just just for just for shits and giggles. I just want to say that if you're listening to this right now, I am I am the biggest Justified fan there ever was. Oh yeah, he is. <laughs> Elmore. I was reading Elmore Leonard before Justified before before Fire in the Hole ever came out as a as the first. <laughs> episode <laughs> I'm justified i'm just saying if you haven't watched it you need to it is yeah. it is easily oh, one of the Walter best Goggins written too. best directed series <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. all right we well, well since you said that's on your list who else is on your list of people you would love to have at comic-con yeah are we talking about a wish list or a, yeah we can talk about a wish list, list. list a practical a, list a list that you think is a wish list but you know you got the connections that you might can make it happen if the so right people are in the right list, room practical a wish. practical wish list well, obviously, we're going to see how well this year goes. Okay. Um, well, speaking of existence, it's going to go great. Yeah, let's, yeah, that's right. Be positive. Yeah. Um, there are names that we've kicked around before that... Um, God, what's his name? Um, drawing a blank. I can see his face. Um, Rain Wilson is somebody that we've oh, kicked around the yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah, we've kicked around Rain Wilson. Nice. We have kicked around John Bernthal. Okay. We have... Uh, Karen Gilliam. Oh, that'd be awesome. Nice. Oh, see, if I had my top five Charlie Cox. Pass list, that, mm. she'd be on it now. Charlie Cox is one person we've Charlie Cox. potentially Charlie kicked Cox around. Awesome. Nice. Um, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. Okay. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think who else. Um, you, you, you get a list, and there's people on there that like, I mean, we could reach and get Chris Hemsworth, mm. okay. um, but we, we couldn't afford him. Correct. So, you know, the, some of these guys command six figure numbers. That, <sighs> Yeah, and they can still get it. Correct. Um, but they're just not going to get it from us. Correct. Is Kevin um, Smith ever on the board? Kevin Smith is actually, yeah, Kevin Smith's doable. Mm. Like, hey, um, man, I'd love to come to this call. 
I mean, there's, there's <laughs> a few is. big names, but it, it's like, you're gonna do a Batman on Batman. Yeah. 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 yeah, all about nothing merge, right? Yeah. Collab. Oh man, um, that was. He likes one of my tweets. Is as far as I've gotten. I yeah. got. I just got chills. I don't even know how to tweet, so you're miles miles ahead of me. <laughs> I got, I got yeah, was... Kevin Smith to like a tweet, and I got Seth Rogen to like a tweet. So I had I had Tom Arnold. He was high when he liked it. So <laughs> Zach, you're funny. You like it for me? <laughs> <He's laughs> he was definitely high when he liked that tweet. Yeah. <laughs> before Robert England had, before Robert England switched his account to a professional account, I may or may not have DM'd back and forth with Robert England a few times. Oh, nice. That was fun. Nice. And he's all like, "Where's this picture from?" It's like Dragon Con. He goes. I was at Dragon Con one time. <laughs> yes, sir, you were. See the banner behind you? <laughs> Here's the picture, sir. I mean, That's you know, we've had, we've had Michael Rooker in the past. Yep. And yeah. um, we've had Mike Dude, Coulter, wow. Ray AKA Park. Yeah. I may yeah. or may not be friends with Mike Coulter. I may or may not text with him Ooh. fairly Mike frequently. Yes, he's cool. Dude. Well, he's, he's from he's, South Carolina. Yeah, he's yeah. from St. Matthews. He's from here. He, he is, went to Benedict and then he, he went to South Carolina. He went to USC. Mm. He is what I would consider just an an everyday celebrity yeah. like yeah, he's cool he's he's just totally down to earth he doesn't look down on anybody he doesn't treat anybody differently it's like like i'll send him a text and he'll say i'll say hey da, da, da. He'll say, oh hey brock what's up how's it going like yeah. he like how's your family doing like he genuinely yeah. is a caring person yeah mm. um i loved his new movie with gerard butler the airplane with movie? the airplane movie yeah he was fantastic. yeah that was fantastic yeah. Oh, that was so good i like the show evil i like him yeah, yeah. Evil. Oh, evil's evil's really good. Good. I yeah, evil's really good mm-hmm. yeah evil's really good yeah, he's you've so been lame good. you've been naming off a couple shows man mr i don't watch tv man yeah. the only <laughs> reason the only he reason i watch the good stuff he's watching the only reason i watch evil evil's because colter's yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. That's the same Makes reason sense. I watched it too. Like, he really he, doesn't watch he TV. Absolutely <laughs> he really doesn't. Like, like I just finished. Like you say, I don't watch a lot of TV. Like I just finished Vikings mm. history show. See, I okay, history yeah. channel. Yeah. I, like that was like it was the first four seasons were like ten episodes and they're like forty minutes. I would long. argue like, it being a history show. Well, it's on History Channel. <laughs> okay, that I'll get. that's what I meant. When I say a history show, History Channel. Yeah. But I watched it on Hulu, so it wasn't like I was watching TV. Okay. okay. But I watched that, and the first four seasons were ten episodes, like forty minutes long. So that they went. Fairly quickly, yeah. but then the second, the fifth, and sixth seasons were twenty episodes of forty minutes long. So I'm like, Ooh. dang, this is going to take forever. So I finally got through that, and now I, I watch Jury Duty. Which have you seen that? Yeah, that is. If 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 any of your listeners yeah. haven't watched Jury Duty, mm-hmm. like I'm an accountant, and I work for the state. But when I retire from the state, I'm going to go to law school. That's my goal is to be a lawyer. Okay, at some point in my life, and so I look at thing. I try to look at things very analytically sometimes. Like, sure. and that show when I watched it. I was like, this is pure genius, yeah. the mm-hmm. way they set it up. If anybody hasn't watched that show, cheap plug for Jury Duty. It's a freeform show, I think, yeah. but it's on Prelu, and you can watch it. But And I, I put my buddy on it, who's a big corporate attorney out of out of D.C., and yeah. I put him on it, and he was he was blown away. He's like, none of this stuff would ever get by. Like, he just, no. like, yeah, <laughs> a, a real lawyer watches this and is like, oh, my God, how do they pull this off? Yeah. It's incredibly done. Yeah. It's really well done. Yeah. Nice. Um, and the last episode did make me cry. Oh, it wow. really did. They would have uh, suckered it, me it the made whole me cry. time, if, like because I've been to jury duty once, and if the people started going off like that, I'd be like, you know, we, we talk about willing <laughs> things into existence. I've never been called for jury duty, so if you're out there, call me for jury Ooh. duty. I think it, I think I'd get dismissed, but. <laughs> You know, 43, never been called. I got picked, and then it was dis- the case was dismissed. I so. think I would get dismissed. They'd be like, no, he's, he's, he's too smart. <laughs> Quickest 15 bucks I ever made. Quickest 15 bucks. <laughs> Only 15? Wow. See, I, I've, done, I've done jury duty locally, but the, the, the one that I really enjoyed was being was doing federal grand jury, mm. where literally we got presented with the cases and then made decisions on whether indictments were going to be handed My out. My brother so. did that one time. I, that sounds I cool. It. That sounds awesome. I loved it. Actually, I had an uncle that got that was doing that in Dallas, and then COVID hit, and they couldn't swear anymore in. So my uncle got stuck doing that for yeah. over a year. Wow! Good night. Couldn't go back to regular work. Was he sequestered? Work. Like they were put to the side and all that well, stuff, and couldn't talk to anybody about it. Was able to go home, oh. but that was yeah. couldn't even yeah. watch TV. They're not supposed to. Yeah, you're not supposed yeah. to do like any. Yeah. yeah. But well, so finished your duty, and now I'm on the peripheral. Okay. Which is a new I show. Started on that. I started that. Yeah, I haven't started that one. Yet. I've gotten like two episodes. Yeah, in. I'm about two or three episodes in. It's it's interesting and oh, it's like he, my he my all time wish list would yeah. be like Chloe Grace Moritz or whatever. Okay, yeah, she okay. is hit girl herself. 
Oh yes. No. I, we gotta, I, and we gotta, would, there's not many I would fanboy over. We got to get Barbie though. I would no. Nah, I could care less about Barbie. <laughs> I would fangirl over Chloe Grace Moretz. She's just. You couldn't pay me to go to that movie. Come on. I could pay you to go to that movie. I've met you a number could not of pay me to go to that movie. Come on. I absolutely but could. I've only fangirled over Haley Williams from Paramore. So, I like her too. Okay, yeah. I like I her too. You could pay me to go to the building, but you couldn't pay me to enjoy it or sit through it. Together, I met her and I was like, okay, she's dressed as Harley Quinn though. Come on. Come on. So we we we, we <laughs> have like, no, no, like, just, no. She's she's pretty. Margot Robbie's very pretty. Correct. But that's not my type. I got you. I so respect we, it. We got just a couple more minutes okay. uh, left. Right. So uh Zach, I'm gonna let Zach ask his trivia. he you get to pick one trivia question or you yeah. get to pick one question you wanna ask his Well but then you ended up saying you don't know a whole lot about comics, right? Well try me. Depends. Okay. It depends on the genre. If I'm you're going to go Knowing like he, Golden Age, Silver yeah. Age, Bronze Age, I'm probably good. I'm mm-hmm. going in the 80s. Modern? Oh, okay. Well, it's 50-50. Well, my first question is going to be if you had to pick a superhero between any any publisher mm-hmm. to come out on top of a, a Royal Rumble, who do you pick? Oh, that's easy. Oh, oh. It's Magneto. Ooh. Mm. That's easy. Well, I should have followed up by why is it Dr. Manhattan <laughs> and why? why? Well, okay, I don't really incorporate. I don't really count the Watchmen, but... <laughs> You say you don't count them, man. Do you like The Watchmen? I've seen the movie. I okay. saw Doctor Doctor Manhattan walk out with this huge giant blue one. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa! Now every guy in America's jealous. Like, oh, I can't show compete show with show that your wallpaper on your phone. What? <laughs> right now? I, I mean, that's like I've always asked myself if I could have any superpower, mm-hmm. what would I pick? And magnetism is the one I would pick mm-hmm. because think about it. You could essentially control everything. Everything. Yeah. Nobody could oh, touch yeah. you. Yeah. You can fly. Mm-hmm. You know, they tried to put magnetic in the plastic prison. Nah, that didn't work. Yeah, yeah. not at all. Yeah, Rebecca Romaine broke him out. Correct. So yeah, it's, it's Magneto. I yeah. think hands down he wins. I used to say I would pick uh, Deadpool's, I mean, uh, Wolverine's regenerative power, but then Deadpool's is so much better. Outside of the looking like a topical graphical map of Utah, <laughs> 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 but, but but Magneto just snaps his fingers and Wolverine's torn to shreds. It's like you can't it's regenerate perfect, yeah. if you're in a trillion pieces. Yeah. yeah, but Deadpool could come back if he was just a little piece and then come back. Cause yeah, but big. he could slice him up and put he could he could put all his he could create little jars Lord. and put him all in little jars. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and that, that's how they killed. That's how they stopped Wolverine. Just put him in a block of adamantium. They're like, well, now you just can't get out of yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, then we had uh I'm sure the one. Amy, do you have one? You can answer that question. I yeah, mean yeah, yeah, I don't sure. I don't do the WWE or any of that mess, but I've always been partial to Gambit. Ah mm. I like Gambit. My absolute favorite. Well that's yeah. because you're a Cajun Remy and he's Le- a Cajun. Remy I am not Remy a Cajun. Remy I am a Caucasian from Louisiana, <laughs> but I am not a Cajun. You a Cajun. You I have a, Cajun. a story I can tell you later. <laughs> who is the weird guy for Man, who would yours be? My my favorite superhero. Well, if you could pick Royal Rumble win. Oh my! Well, well who are in World War? It, it, so it, it just depends. So like when Zach asked me the question, I mm-hmm. said I said, well, is it specifically on Earth? If it's specifically on Earth, correct. I kind of got to give it to Superman. Mm-hmm. Uh, only because, but if it's anywhere else, Superman's a big loser. You know? Okay. Because the only reason he's got his powers is because he has an allergic reaction to the sun. Okay. So, so what mean, if Galactus comes and eats the sun? Well, then yeah. Batman, then then uh, Superman's out. He is out. Uh, Superman is very, he's beatable here, and he's yeah. beatable with rocks. Well, and, and all and you have she, to do is just throw Lois Lane into the mix, and he's a loser again. He he's, he's, he's beatable with Martha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he succumbs. Yeah, apparently to that's Batman his kryptonite. That well. is his kryptonite. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that, you know, that's I guess that's just where well, you got another then, one. Um, so the other question was is also related to Watchmen, just because I'm a massive Watchmen fan. What is the symbol on Doctor Manhattan's forehead? He didn't tell me, and in, in, when he asked, yeah, I don't me know. The I can't either. remember. I isn't, saw the movie. Isn't it like it's a, it's a circle with like two lines that go up in like a like kind of a dot in the middle? Two dots. Is it Omega? Is it? No, it's, it's not, not a, Omega. It's no. not a Greek. So what's the answer? It's the symbol of the hydrogen atom. Oh. And the reason he did it because it's simplicity. that's the smallest atom. Uh, garners his respect. Mm. Uh, okay, because he's a weird dude, but I love uh, Doctor. He's he's a weird dude. Yeah, I told that I, I haven't watched the Watchmen series. Yeah, I watched so the movie. I and that to... was a long time ago. The series is that was uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. It's amazing. He was the comedian, wasn't he? Yeah, he got like right off the rip. Tall, yeah, out, tall, yeah, tall, yeah. Stout, tall, yeah. out of the apartment, and yeah. he landed as then a you, then pancake. once you watch it and you see all the bad stuff he did, you're yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah. No, I thought the Watchmen movie was very well done. And what's the oh, yeah. Mika Ackerman or whatever the girl's yes, name? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. She's nice looking too. Yeah. So I was like, ooh, okay. Zack Snyder did one thing right. 
Well, we'll just do the hard sell real quick. The uh, of course, uh, twenty twenty three Soda City Comic Con is I have one more question. Whoa, all right, Zach, one more, one one more, more, more question. One more. Go for it. Who is the female Robin in Dark Knight Returns? What's her name? It's the only female Robin there is. I knew it existed. I had not watched the movie. It's not a movie. It's a graphic novel, oh, right? Oh, the novel? It's yeah. Frank Miller. Yeah. Oh, then I, I can picture her. Know. She's got blonde hair and it's all messy. and Red hair, big glasses. Yeah. I don't know her name. It's Carrie Kelly. Carrie Kelly. Oh, okay. Mm. That, see, that's a little... Robin. That's that's more modern. I've had copies I've had copies of that book. But yeah, yeah. I've, I've, mm. I don't, I've, no, I wouldn't know. That was just a little the deep ones I could think of. Well, thank <laughs> you. Thank you for the comments. Zach's uh, go deep, too. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so Hard Sell uh, 2023 Soda City Comic Con is coming up August 19th and 20th. Mm-hmm. Uh, tickets are available now online. But, of course, like we said, you can vote. You can definitely get them online. You can get one-day and two-day tickets. Uh, we're going to be there. Get them at the door. Yeah. You can buy them at the door. Uh, we're going to be there. Uh, so uh, if you're a, uh, if you're a fan of the show, and for some, and if you're not, somehow you stumbled onto this. Uh, but thank you for listening. Uh, but uh, we're going to be there, so come say hi to us as well, and uh, and, and and make sure to spend your money. Uh, there's going to be a ton of vendors there. Uh, awesome Bang vendors. Back is a Transmission Arcade. Or is it, uh, they're doing their uh, is it pinball. Yeah, we have the what I what I like to refer to as the South Carolina's largest pop up arcade. Yeah, and mm. there should be, be so there'll be fifty plus machines there. Pinball, old arcade. We wow. have another room that has vintage uh, console games like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega's Dreamcast. Oh, that's where we're going to be. At. Uh, they occasionally have a land. They have a Wii, <laughs> that stuff. Um, you have one. Yep, they have all that stuff. So you know, and we also we are introducing something new this year. It's called Twilight Pinball for nine dollars and ninety nine cents, which you can buy on Eventbrite. Uh, you can play unlimited pinballing games from six p to ten p. Wow. So it's kind of like an wow. after party on site. Yeah, very cool. Yep. So you know. I haven't decided if that's those tickets are going to be available at the door yet. We'll see, um, but you know we're we're constantly trying to introduce new and exciting attractions to the event, and you know the pinball, the arcade, the vintage gaming that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Are y'all the yeah. first people to in, 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 uh, put those together, the comments and the pinball together at a convention? Like, because uh, I, I usually don't see that. Dragon Con has an arcade, but I yeah. haven't seen the pinball. Yeah, the pinball is that's I, a very good idea. That I feel like y'all groundbreaking on that because Columbia right now you see all these pinball places popping up out of yeah. nowhere yeah. and i feel like since y'all are in putting that in there it's only going to help those businesses out too so if my dad was still alive he would be like we're going to the pinball <laughs> yeah. and we do have people that just come for the pinball and yep. they'll find uh, everything else and go way we have different, we have different tournaments there's tournaments there's yeah. I, ibpf or something like that international pinball fishing there's a couple sponsored tournaments mm. where people from around the around the southeast region i think come they play and they accumulate mm-hmm. points you know nice um, Get your button fingers ready, so i'm ready man yeah, come on the flippers yeah the flippers yeah, the <laughs> and some of the celebs have been known to go through the pinball we've had people mm. come down there and play yeah so hey, we'll you never know who out. you never know who you're gonna bump into wow that's when you're um, going down bro last so. year emily swallow was doing what was it the electric slide down in the middle of the hallway nice. with the people's yeah was she there nice. last year or the year before? Or a year before. Whoever well, it was last I'll year. I'll make sure I don't Might get no been interviews Alexis in last that year. Was like, it was yeah. Alexis. People can get a little yeah. too serious in that one. Yeah. Well, hey, how you doing, man? I'll play it, Papa. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always be in high school. <laughs> Honestly, there's something for everybody. But also, yeah, there uh, really is. Contesting. Uh, there's a contest as far as uh, 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 costume Kids contest. Kids cosplay on Sunday. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So, so make sure. Look, here, the details are all on the uh, the website. So you can visit allaboutnothing.com and you can go to, uh, you can find a link right at the top of our page that'll take you to the Soda City Comic Con webpage. Uh, I'm ready so to see all that. the furries. Oh, well, there'll so. be a few, I'm sure. Yeah. There, and they can few. always call me because yep. you your guys, phone numbers your phone number's on there <laughs> and the email address is on there. I, I, tend, I respond to almost every single email. I can't say I respond to every email. Because I may miss one, but I respond to ninety nine percent of them. Um, you call the number, you're going to get me. If you don't, leave a message, and if you're human, I'll call you back. And, and this is the proof because we yeah, called, yep. and now exactly. he's here. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, we are going to be promoting the tar out of Soda good. City yeah, Comic-Con. correct. So the last thing, last thing I want to ask you about Brock, uh, not Soda City Comic Con related, is the Doco uh, Rib. Oh Fest. yeah, the Rib Fest. <laughs> um, now uh, that it typically takes place in March. Yep. So. Have the planning already started for <laughs> well, Bears trying to get in? A, <laughs> <laughs> right now. My dog. The, the event is yeah. actually hosted by the Greater Blythewood Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. And the town is one of the marquee sponsors of the event. Nice. It's a, it, it, I don't want to give bad information, but I think I can say most of these things. It's a two day event. They do Friday afternoons or Friday evenings, and they have a, they've, in the past, they've had bands, they've had, uh, similar to Pig on the Ridge and Ridgeway, yeah. like they on Fridays they do a anything but kind yeah. of where they'll like do chili or they'll do uh, some form of other other food cook off. Um, I think 
memory serves me correct, the last couple of Fridays actually have been rained out. So it hasn't really uh, panned out like they've thought. But, you know, no good deed, right? Correct. So um, Friday nights, they, they try to do a, they try to do a, like a, an evening event. And then Saturday, you wake up in the morning. I tend to go to bed late and wake up early because I'm an old man and that's what we do. Yeah. And, you know, you, I go out to go grab a bite of breakfast at 730 in the morning and the whole town smells like roasted pork. Mm, it's amazing. And it, it, it really, it really is. Like and I, I, I live in a, a neighborhood right downtown. <laughs> I live in the only neighborhood that's, that's truly downtown Blythewood. And so I could walk to the park in 10 minutes. Wow. So you can imagine like the smell. And then when I drive by it, you see all the smokers and all the smoke coming out. And you're just like, yeah, I want to go eat ribs right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that my mouth is watering. So that's, that's basically just a, just a little pre, yeah. pre to they have 10,000 pounds of ribs. They usually have 50 or so contestants. Uh, all the ribs are a little bit different. You've got your wet ribs. You've yep. got your dry mm-hmm. ribs. There's vendors that sell uh, tchotchkes and knickknacks for your kids. There's other people that sell food that's not ribs. There's beer and wine. Yeah. Uh, vendors. You, yeah. Uh, the, in fact, uh, I, I I probably spent about $50 in yeah. popcorn from the uh, yeah. from one of the popcorn vendors. Yeah, uh, yeah the, we never seen that popcorn. It was fantastic. <laughs> They're out of Chapin. And there's, go there's no on. cost to attend. Like, it doesn't yeah. cost you anything to mm. show up. If you want to sample the ribs, they they went away from the all you can eat model right. to a ticket model which probably is more beneficial for a <laughs> consumer yeah. because yeah because let's just say like I bought I bought $20 worth of tickets last year and I took yep. my two kids I still had two or three tickets by the time we were ready to yep. go mm. and I took three kids with me yeah so or I might about $40 worth of tickets and I gave some away so you know you think you're going to eat a tremendous amount of food, you but you really won't. Yeah. Like you go get five or six ribs, you can't try them all. No. Nah. You can't. So let's take them one bite and throw them away. It's yeah. the but way. Th- that's not the most economical. And I'm an nah. accountant. I do not recommend that strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I count pennies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, believe me, I know. Yeah. You're going to have people looking at you. Like, you see how I look at people that don't finish the chicken bone? I'm that's like, true. what are you doing? That's like, true. Yeah, we don't need these elitist foodies coming to Blythe with, <laughs> you with your all forks. the meat on the bone. Yeah, don't come through with yeah. your forks. I, I just want to so, point out, but we're going we're gonna to be promoting that for you too. Yeah, yeah that's, when, this, when it that really is. Up. That is, in my opinion, and I speak as as you know an, 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 an individual who promotes and runs an event. Yeah. That is, in my opinion, the marquee event in Blythewood. That's the one that I look forward to the most. Nice. I like to eat. I like the the camaraderie and I like the social aspect of it. And you see you see people from all shapes, uh, all yeah. walks and shapes of life. Um, it, it's just it really is a good community event. I, I applaud the Blythewood Chamber. Haven't always seen eye to eye with them. Sometimes sure. they don't think I like them, and I they I think they're politically. I've got some different opinions about it, but I think. I think I can say without question that that is by far their best, most successful, and most accepted event by the community because it just brings people together That's over commonality. Mm. Pork and probably beer. And high yeah. blood so, pressure, man. Uh, we, we take medicine. <laughs> <laughs> we have Blythewood Pharmacy. Get your pills there. That's <laughs> cheap plug for them. All right. Thank you very much, Brock. No, and thank Amy you for so being much on. for having thank me. Thank you all so much. Soda City Comic Con is coming up on August 19th and 20th. Again, tickets are available. You can check out the allaboutnothing.com website to, uh, to, to find a link to uh, details and tickets. And uh, I, I suggest everybody go. Yep. If you can't get your tickets early, go the day, whatever. Just just attend because this is going to be a huge event. And it's really one of the only things that's going on in August for Columbia right now. Yeah. yeah. I will add one more thing. It, it's, it's funny. That's a great segue because... Like, like we were talking earlier, and one of our goals is to make August Comic-Con month. Like, we want people in the city of Columbia mm. to think August, the Soda City Comic-Con. We want that to be the marquee event yeah. in in Columbia for the month of August. And if we can eclipse these numbers, you know, we can get our 10,000 or so attendees. Yeah. I think we can get City Council to buy in. Yeah. I think we can yeah. get the CVB to buy in. Yeah. We can get the City of Columbia Economic Development. We can yeah. probably get Richland County Economic Development. We can really get those engine engines going yeah. and drive this event. There's no reason that we can't, you know, if you, you guys mentioned you've never been to San Diego, you want to go to San Diego. Correct. Like the whole city starts prepping for this like, like weeks in advance. Yeah. And the whole week of Comic-Con leading up to, even though, San Diego starts on a Wednesday, like that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. There's so much mm. going on before it. Oh, yeah. because of the event. Yeah. Yeah. the event. Yeah. It's like a hundred and fifty million dollar yeah. economic impact for that yeah. just that one week in yeah. San Diego, yeah. and that doesn't count 
the prior weeks before and after because yeah. you know if you fly all the way out to San Diego and you've got a family you're going to stay for a few oh, days of course. you're going to go to the zoo you might catch yep. a baseball game stuff like that I mean it's a long flight from here I've, been, I've done that flight a couple times yeah. 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 So, but we want to kind of create the same atmosphere and we want people to be excited we want restaurants running specials all week yeah. we want you know people um you know, having you know, if there's spinoff events, somebody contacted me the other day about doing a, a, a trivia uh, the Thursday night before at like Hickory Tavern or somewhere like that, yeah, like yeah. an anime trivia yeah. or something like that. They're like, we want to get involved with you guys. I'm like, of course we want to get involved. Nice. So, you know, there's there's so much opportunity for that. And like you said, you know, you got the fair in October. You got Carolina football kicks off in September. Why yep. can't why can't October, August be Comic Con month? Totally Let's agree. Do it. Totally yeah, man. Agree. It's hot yeah. enough for it. Hey, we're sicking the nothingers right? on it. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all make it big. All right. That is going to do it for this episode. Uh, episode number 165, the All About Nothing podcast. Good episode. Thank you, Zach King. Thank you, Trent Clark. Thank you, Brock. Thank, Thank you, Andrew, for being here. Quite welcome. Loved it. Uh, links to all of our past episodes, podcast platforms, and merchandise and social media are, are available on our website, theallaboutnothing.com. And if you think it's financial model of giving away free content and entertainment is silly and you're in the giving mood, why not become an official nothinger and support the show? Visit theallaboutnothing.com and click on the support link near the top of the page. You can subscribe monthly at a varying level of membership tiers and click on the tips link if you want to just give one time. And if, uh, if you'd like to join the conversation, you can join our Discord channel by clicking on the banner at the top of the webpage. Please subscribe to the show, like, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Share us with your family and friends. Thank you very much for listening. You all stay safe and have a week. The All About Nothing podcast is produced and engineered by me, Bear Gruber, and recorded from the podcast studio at GOT Sound Studio in Lexington, South Carolina. GOT Sound Studio is owned and operated by Neek the Geek. Visit GOTSoundStudio.com for details on studio rental, production, and engineering. Thanks to Cake for our intro music, Sick of You. You can follow everything Cake the Band at CakeMusic.com. Thanks to Muff the Producer for our outro music. You can follow Muff on Instagram at Muff the Producer. Thanks to Trent Clark, a.k.a. DJ Lonzo. Join him weekly at the venue in Columbia. South Carolina for the Saturday All-Star Drag Brunch and Sundays at the Review Drag Brunch. You can also contact Trent for all your entertainment needs. Trent at theallaboutnothing.com and on Instagram, the Real DJ Lonzo. You can also phone him 803-262-7982. Thanks to Zach King. You can follow him on Instagram at KingZach07 and on Twitter at CarolinaKing21. I am Barrett Gruber. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Barrett Gruber or visit my link tree slash Barrett Gruber. Want to support the show? Visit our page, the All allaboutnothing.com and become a member. There are several tiers available, including memberships that give you early access to episodes, as well as exclusive content. Visit theallaboutnothing.com. To find links to our social media, merchandise, and past episodes, as well as other details, visit theallaboutnothing.com. If you'd like to be heard on the show, you can call and leave us a message. Dial 803-672-0533. If the time between these episodes is more than you can handle, check out our partner podcast. Zach and I host What the Pod Was That with Carrie Simmons. Visit whatthepodwasthat.com for links and details. Amita takes a deep dive down the rabbit hole in episodes of Welcome to Wonderland. Available on all of your podcast platforms. As well, you should check out DJ Lonzo's Top 5. Available on all of the podcast listening platforms. Please subscribe and share the show. If you're on YouTube, please like and hit the notification bell. The All About Nothing podcast is a product of Bear Gruber Entertainment and Media. Thank you for listening.